Hey, what's up guys? Most of you know me as Admin Clusterbomb from the first Awesome Platoon Facebook page. Unless you're watching this on YouTube, then you know me as Colby Meek. And this video is the first of what I hope to be multiple videos showing how to make quality props for a decent budget. Now this video is going to be how to paint your props, uh, specifically how to get a worn metal finish. And uh, the prop I've chosen is my Pip-Boy replica that I'm finishing for a convention next week. Now usually when I want a worn metal look, I start out by priming the piece I want painted. I don't, it doesn't matter what primer you use, whatever you prefer. And then spray painting it either satin or flat black. And one thing I actually found kind of interesting is the cheap $1 cans of black spray paint that you can get at Lowe's, Home Depot, Walmart. Those actually seem to work the best for the metal look I'm trying to achieve. See this one's just called uh, Quick Color Fast Drying All Purpose Spray Enamel. It's only a dollar a can and it'll be more than enough. So what I usually do is I prime the piece and then put maybe three to four coats of paint on it. Uh, being sure to make sure the coats are even, there's no bubbles or anything. If there is, I sand it down and then make sure it's smooth. This seems to have a pretty decent smooth finish to it, as does the other half of it. This is the uh, bottom half. This is the top half. Now for painting detail, I use acrylic paint, which you can see right here. I have quite a few different colors. Obviously the most import important color you need is uh, silver. And I got this at Michael's Craft Store. You could probably get this something similar at Walmart. Uh, it's Craft Smart Metallic Paint. This is also about a dollar per tube. Um, I also like to use black for grime and like little corners and stuff. Brown for muddy looks, like dirty washes. And also Actually, I mix red and blue to make purple because when applied correctly, purple creates a pretty realistic rust look. Also, I have a small bowl of water that's just to wash off my brushes. And I have uh, multiple styles of brushes here. Also, I have a napkin just to uh, wipe down the paint and brushes if need be. I also have a paper plate here. That's where I apply the paint. So now that I have all the materials, I'm ready to start painting. Now before you start painting whatever project you're going to attempt, I recommend getting plenty of reference pictures to work with. Uh, seen here on my computer is another Pip Boy that I actually painted for my friend, so this is one I made. And I'm going to be doing something similar to this paint job, but a little more detailed. He wasn't really concerned about having as much detail as possible as just getting his done. So just be sure you have plenty of reference pictures and a lot of patience because um, painting, it usually takes a lot of effort, a lot of patience, and you might have to stop, let it sit to dry for a while, then come back later. Uh, usually painting really well takes maybe up to two hours if it's really detailed. If you just want to do a metal look though, it'll probably only take half an hour. However, I'm going to show you the process to go from uh, bare metal look to rusty to grimy. I'm going to do everything in this tutorial to hopefully give you more ideas of what to do. Now when you do start painting your project, one thing that's actually good to do is pick a spot that most people are not going to see. Um, something that's least likely to be looked at like uh, maybe little corners or stuff or inside cracks because if you screw up in the beginning people aren't going to notice that spot as much as they'd notice a more obvious spot like the screen because everybody's going to be looking at the screen of this but if I do mess up nobody's really going to be looking at the bottom of the pit boy because it sits under my arm so we're going to start painting from there usually what I do I like to get a brush that's uh, relatively wide. This one's the widest one I have unfortunately so I'll have to make do. Now I'll start by getting my silver metallic paint. I want to shake it up really good, make sure it's all mixed up. And from there just squirt a little bit on your paper plate. 
like hardly any, maybe two or three drops. Because you don't need a lot of metallic paint to make something look metallic. This is quite a bit actually. And it's okay if you don't have enough, just put more on the paper plate. It's just better to have a little and add more than have too much and end up wasting it. So what I'm going to do is dip the tip of my paintbrush in the paint and then from here I'm going to run it along the ridges of the paper plate until it's just barely showing anymore. It becomes really thin, which you can see right there. In fact, you can hardly see it and that's actually good. So what you do from there, you pick a spot nobody's really going to look at and you just start carefully dry brushing the paint onto the piece. So, start going like that. And edges that are raised up as opposed to edges that are low down like this are going to have more wear on them because they're more likely to hit something. So you just gently run your brush. One thing that helps is um, don't try to make your strokes very even because usually weathering and wear is a lot more random than you think so kinda you can go up and down sideways left and right doesn't even matter you you can see I'm not too concerned I'm just not even really caring just brushing across um, after a few strokes continue to dip your brush in and wipe the paint really thin and then continue applying I'm experienced with this so it doesn't take me very long but this will take most people a long time if it's their first try. Alright sorry for the sudden random background change but I need a little bit better lighting to show you what I mean. So you can see um, the metallic paint actually is catching the light really good. And edges like this those are going to have more wear on them because they're corners and edges that are inside here like recessed areas are going to have a little less wear and you can see they're kind of darker than the outside of the pip boy and uh, this method applies to anything that have edges be it like a uh, guns receiver my pip boy um, scale models stuff like that um, all of them usually have the same rule with the pip boy though it's much more exaggerated because the whole thing has been used for 200 years and it's seen a lot of wear. You're going to want to continue this process on your entire prop, uh, whatever it may be. So the top half of my pit boy will get the same treatment as this part as well as the rest of the bottom half. I've started the top half of the pit boy and I wanted to show you guys a cool trick. If you're up to it, um, I would recommend this. If you're still uncomfortable painting, don't do this. Um, I've barely started this section right here. In fact, I've only done a really thin coat just to test it. But one thing you can do that's kind of cool is to take your brush, take your brush, dip it like normal, get the paint on it, take it, and without a care in the world, just go like that. Get it all over the place. Don't even pay attention to it. And the reason I say that is because, um, like I said earlier, weathering is random. It's not a uniform color. It's not a uniform design. It's random. You get dings and scratches in random places. You don't plan out where something gets damaged. So if I just randomly brush all over it, it tends to look a little more authentic than say if I was just to sit here and carefully brush up and down like this. So if you're painting a prop and you've gotten this far, you've come a pretty long way and you've done a pretty good job, so congratulations. If your intention was to just have a worn metal look, from here you can stop and uh, give your piece a clear coat to seal in the paint because acrylic paint isn't quite as strong as the spray paint cover, so you're going to want to put clear coat on this for sure. If you want to know how to do grime and rust in all the cracks and stuff, keep watching and I'll show you how to do that now. From this point on, I'm going to show you how to add uh, grime and mud and maybe a little rust to your project if you want it to look really detailed. Uh, you could just use brown for rust and call it a day, and that still does look pretty good. But if you want to go really far into it, you can add black for grime, 
brown for rust, obviously, and then red and blue to make uh, whatever shade of purple you want. Rust does have a little bit of purple in it, so it makes it a little, little more authentic if you do it correctly. Now the first color you're wanna, gonna wanna start adding detail with will be brown, because that's what you're most likely to see when something's weathered. And same with when I start painting silver, you're gonna wanna pick a spot that most people aren't gonna see that well in case you screw up. And you're also gonna wanna do really light coats not even going to need that much paint. You can see right here. For now, that'll be enough. So this is a bit of a different process from uh, dry brushing silver. You're going to want to dab it down a little bit to get rid of some of the excess paint. But you're also not going to just kind of brush like this on your prop. What you're going to do is dab it. Get a little bit of puddle in the corner of your brush. You can see that and find a spot where you think mud would be common. In these little crevices, it'd be a little bit harder to clean it, so you could assume that mud would build up in there, so I'm just gonna dab it in and brush it out a little bit. When you brush it out, it is similar to dry brushing the silver paint, except what you're gonna wanna do to tone it down is take a clumped up paper napkin and kinda just wipe it so it becomes uh, really faint almost like someone tried to clean it and didn't quite get it all the way. You can also dab down in corners like this. That seems to do the trick pretty well for me. So basically just do this wherever you see fit. Uh, just any place you think that um, mud, grime, whatever gunk would build up on something. Mostly just uh, corners and edges. Well, no edges would be cleaner, but little recessed areas like this ribbed piece, that would be a spot where a lot of buildup would happen, so just dab it in. And you can see I got quite a bit on there, so just wipe the majority of it off. And just do that all over this until you are satisfied with the look. So I'm showing you where some of the brown showed up on the Pip-Boy. Um, mostly in here, a little bit along this edge and then some right here. And you can barely see it which is good because you only want it to act as an accent color. You don't want it to overwhelm the other colors. Now once you're satisfied with how much brown you've put onto your prop, you can stop from there. Um, I'm going to continue to keep going and add purple. Uh, purple is used to simulate rust. And you can buy purple paint, but I prefer to mix red and blue paint because you can control the tint and shade of whatever purple you prefer. As you can see on my plate, I already have some set up. So what you're going to do is just barely dab the brush in, kind of like tap it on the paint like that. Find a spot where purple would show up. Usually it shows up around screw holes and stuff, and I already have some pre-drilled holes in this where I'm going to be... Uh, screwing in some screws and popping some rivets here so that's where I'm gonna put it all you gotta do is gently dab it you can see I put quite a bit on there so now what I'm gonna do is dip a paper towel in water wring it out and gently wipe uh, don't be too forceful because you might take too much of it off and there, you just want to find the fine line between realistic and cartoonish. There is a distinction, a very specific one. And if you end up wiping too much off, it's okay. You can just add more and repeat the process. I'm satisfied with how this looks, so I'm going to leave that spot alone. And I'm just going to do that to every screw hole. Purple usually is almost non-existent in rust, but if you add just a tiny, tiny bit, it sells the look a lot better than if you weren't to have any. Now that I'm done with purple, I could add a little bit of black to the uh, little corners like down in this crevice, down here, down here. Uh, just any depressed spot on your project you could add a little bit of black and that gives it a grimier effect I don't feel that this needs it though so I'm not gonna do that step 
One more thing you could do from here, if you ended up getting too much brown, black, or purple on spots that you want to be shiny, you could do another coat of silver in uh, high wear areas like the edge of this, a little screen protector. That would be considered a high wear area because it's raised above the rest of the uh, parts and therefore more likely to get dinged or scratched. But this looks fine too, so I'm not going to do that step either. So as far as this project is going, there's only one more step left, and that would be to give it a final clear coat. Okay, the final step you're going to want to do is give your prop a clear coat. And uh, clear coat is basically just a clear paint that um, it seals off the paint that you put on there and keeps... It, it takes the damage from hits and stuff, so your, your nice paint job doesn't get screwed up. So just shake it up like normal spray paint. And one thing I want to stress, please wear a respirator when you use any sort of spray paint. I don't want you dying because you wanted to follow my tutorial. Shake it up, and just like normal spray paint, you're going to want to do light, thin coats over a period of time as opposed to one thick, heavy coat. So just, just really lightly run it across. After clear coating, be sure you let this sit for at least two hours because uh, clear coat lets off a lot of fumes that smell bad and they can be harmful to you if you breathe them in. So definitely let your project sit for a few hours so it can air out and after that you're done. By using this technique you can get a pretty cool effect on any props or projects that you've been working on. Just give it a try and you're bound to get results in the end. Anyways guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I appreciate it and I hope that it was helpful for your projects. If you did manage to paint something by following this tutorial, I would love to see it. So send me a video, pictures, just whatever you want. Uh, good luck with your projects.